Welcome back to Morning Express this 18th day of February 2014. I'm Sophia Wanuna. That conversation in 1957, day like today, 18th of February, Dedan Kimathi was hanged at the committee prison. Today is a commemoration, the 57th. And I'm joined in studio with by Otieno Ombok, who's with the Human Rights Solidarity Committee, as well as Alamin Kimathi, to talk more about this, but also activism, key issue at modern day Kenya. We've seen quite a lot of activists, Boniface Mangi, who we had on set uh, in studio yesterday, talking about retiring from the same. What can we learn from Dad and Kimathi? What were the ideals that he fought for? And today, Kenya at 50, do we still see that spirit in some of our Kenyans? Let's have that conversation. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. And um, for many people who were not born in 1957, they did not get to be uh, in that time when Dad and Kimathi lived and, and walked here in Kenya serving the country. If you were to talk about the person Dad and Kimathi was, what he lived for, his fight, you know, what he died for, what would you say? I'll begin with you, Alamin. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Sophia. Uh, I was not born in 1957 yes. either, and yeah. therefore I talk from history, yes. but also interacting with the spirit of Teran Kimathi embodied in, uh, in uh, the veterans of the struggle, right. as well as uh, those whom we have struggled uh, through uh, uh, the, the various phases of the struggle in this country. And uh, I think for me, Dedan Kimathi then embodies that spirit, it, uh, the spirit of uh, freedom, uh, the struggle for liberation of not just uh, uh, the, the Kenyan person, but the human, uh, 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 hum hu the, the humanity mm -hmm. as uh, then domiciled within uh, the, the country right. and a Pan-Africanist uh, par excellence. Mm -hmm. Uh, something that uh, we see kind of uh, uh, lacking today, uh, the, and the, the spirit of uh, selflessness, uh, giving you uh, all your all to a struggle, mm -hmm. uh, to a cause that you have conviction about, uh, uh, and uh, th now that rekindles. Uh, when we commemorate a day like this, yes. uh, it, it is calling us to look back and. Uh, evaluate that vision whether where are we with it mm -hmm. are we still on course and where are we going are, we, are people who do not who lack a history do not have a vision right and uh, as we continue to hear what uh, Umbok has to say remember we have our phone lines open you can be part of our conversation this morning call in if you have a question a comment be part of this discussion uh, Umbok of course I doubt you were also born then <laughs> in 1957 but uh, at least have a great understanding of his legacy uh, the mandate and Kimasi yes uh, we first of all ask how, how the British came here. Mm. Uh, they were on their way to Uganda to go and protect the Nile, which was uh, sourced from Lake Victoria. On their way there, they realized uh, this land they can also occupy and benefit from its richness. Mm -hmm. So what they did in that occupation was to evict people from their lands, forcefully, brutally, uh, imprisoned them, those who resisted, Others who, like Koitalel and Wayaki Wainga were, were also brutally killed. Just for, for defending their land, uh, women were raped, children, uh, communities were forced into labor because they were asked to go and work in those plantations. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kenyans who tried to do cash crop also were denied. And uh, work at workplaces like factories and industry were almost uh, slave shops. So uh, the, the, the reason for, for fighting for independence included self-rule, that Kenyans can rule themselves mm. uh, in dignity. And secondly, defend that land or reclaim it back. And that if you are to be engaged in end labor, it has to be labor with a human face. Um, the right to education, the right to health care, 
all these things that are now enshrined in our Bill of Rights in the Constitution were the very issues that Kemati uh, lived, fought for, and died for. And died for. Mm -hmm. And 50 years uh, since Kenya attained her independence, how different is the Kenya then um, that he was in, the one that he fought for that independence, which we were able to get um, about, what, six years later, um, and the Kenya we see now and celebrate uh, half a century of independence? Well, uh, of course, it's totally different, yeah. very much different. Uh, we cannot, uh, uh, <coughs> it's not to be gainsaid, uh, the, the progress that uh, the Kenyan has made since then, uh, even after that uh, epic uh, moment of independence. Mm -hmm. But then what we're asking ourselves is whether that vision that Kimathi and, the comp and his compatriots uh, struggled for and died for, we, we that we, are we still with it mm. uh, and whether the ideals that they upheld then where, whether they are they have a place in our in modern in modern Kenya mm. and then in relative terms we can as we can very well uh, qualify that statement by saying again that this it leaves too much to be desired, to be desired. just too much yeah. not just much but too much, too much. Uh, if we look at the goals of uh, independ at independence of Kenyan independent, uh, I mean independent Kenya, where we were looking at uh, ignorance, uh, uh, disease, and economy, or whatever, uh, and poverty, where we, amongst in in, in, in those ones, mm. we look like we are quite regressing. We had a face that we had an uplift. Uh, then there's a phase now that we look like we are going down because mm -hmm. the majority are with, within the brackets of the have-nots. Yes. And the minority are the haves. There's inequality. The space is just too wide. Yeah. Uh, it's quite yawning. Indeed, Kenya uh, is a, the, the world's second most unequal society. Mm. And that cannot, uh, you know, uh, if you locate that within the ideals of the veterans um, and the freedom fighters, uh, then we've, we can uh, really say without uh, uh, any doubt mm. that we lost it. Yeah. Ombok, you feel if dead and were to be alive today, he'd be disappointed? With what Kenya has become, despite some of those huge milestones, but also looking on the other, the flip side, we will get a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, really? <laughs> yeah, Kimathi <laughs> was betrayed. He was betrayed. Okay. Uh, by collaborators, mm. and that is why, uh, if you ask, in fact, yesterday somebody was asking about. Kimathi and uh, whether he was uh, tortured by Moi. This is a, a Kenyan lady who is doing um, uh, sales and marketing for an investment company. She's over 30. She doesn't know what time Kimathi lived. And, uh, and she says uh, if it was not for the monument, she wouldn't have known Kimathi at all. Mm. Uh, Almin and I were part of the Kimathi movement that pushed the government since Moi's time right. to have that monument there. If you noticed, uh, we didn't have m any monument before that one and now uh, Tom Boyer, which means history has been written in a way that uh, distorts facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way then we are bringing up children who don't know where they have come from in terms of history. And if you see Christians and uh, other communities, they come up with sainthood mm -hmm. as a process of reliving what those saints fought for. So Kim Kimathi, if he, he was a Christian, he would have been a saint. But that takes a process. It is inculturated in people's teachings. It is properly documented so that uh, those who are are coming up generations to generations will will memorize that story as if they were with him alive mm. but what has happened if i'm telling you now that uh, a 30 plus year old does not know 
uh, how Kimati died, she was literally saying, oh, she, he's one of those who are tortured by Moi. Huge is, ignorance <laughs> right yes. there. Uh, and the puzzle and the question of his remains that has one, um, been one of those uh, issues in as far when his name comes up here in Kenya, does that shock you? I, it is. Well, maybe I could say it's a bit disgusting yeah. to have uh, that situation. And, uh, but then it doesn't shock me. Okay. Looking at the history, the distorted history that uh, Ombok is talking about, mm. then you see that uh, uh, it is some interests have had it that uh, those remains remain there. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I, I think there is, if we look at it, in, oh, you know, you, you must get a lemonade, uh, some lemonade out of a lemon. Kimadi's remains being in committee for me and probably for Mbok says that he's still in jail. Mm. And therefore, we Kenyans, we are still in jail. Mm -hmm. And we have to free Kimathi and free our, in, in, that, in, that, in that regard, free ourselves. Right. So uh, that is a call then. If you really have to free, if you don't free Kimathi, then you have, you, you, you have to deal with enslaved uh, Kenyans in shackles. Mm. And we're in shackles of insecurity. We're in shackles of Corruption. massive unemployment. And the big one, graft. Sophia, as mm. you, you, you call it, uh, corruption. Yeah. And it's not uh, things that have fallen from uh, you know, outer space. We have created them. And part of what we did, you know, on achievement of independence, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga said it's not yet Uhuru. And I do kind of uh, subscribe to that uh, view. Right. Is we supplanted the colonialist just changed the pigmentation mm -hmm. and brought in another colonialist yeah. in our own pigment. And we continued with the same old mentality and still serving, retaining at least, you know, our umbilical cord with the colonialist mm. and serving a small class, a clique that has continued, uh, you know, has perpetuated that the shackling of the Kenyan, mm. the shackling of Dead and Kimathi, right. the shackling of Ombok and yourself and myself. Yeah. Right. A and there have been very many, you know, uh, people, activists who have come, even after independence Kenya, who have fought for great ideals, stood for great uh, ideals in this country and have seen the problem, the rot, the issues in the country, which we face, quite a number, you've mentioned some of them. Um, but, but still, that does not seem to resonate with the masses. It seems like when we see the recent protests, very few, many people will tweet about the issues and the challenges. When we talk about street protests, a handful will be on the streets. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the message of the challenges and the issues and facing them head on, resonating with the entire you know, the, the masses, the public in general, that's not happening. Mm. So when we see these few that stand out, what is it about first them? Let's talk about those that have stood for these great ideals, who've come out, who have suffered, who've been imprisoned, you know, mm. uh, who've died uh, because of what they believe Kenya is. What is it about such individuals? Like, even to compare with what we saw Mandela in South Africa, what is it about such few individuals? What is it about them? First of all, um, in, in many places, uh, even historically, it's the same number that uh, comes out mm -hmm. to, to be different because a majority of people are uh, fearful. Not that they are not interested, but they are fearful. They are intimidated by the system. Right. So it takes a really very courageous person to, 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 to step forward. So courage is... It, courage mm. is key. Second is about inspiration. Um, some people are inspired by what they have seen, like Bonfast was inspired by what he saw as he was taking pictures. That moved him. And many other journalists, like Almin, I also have a, a media background, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. So 
so people are inspired by what they have witnessed firsthand. We also know uh, there's a, a writer called Christopher Okigbo who was wondering whether to write about uh, the war in Nigeria or to take gun as an evil and go and fight. Mm. So uh, witnessing is the other thing. And motivation from mentorship. Some of us went through mentorship. We were part of Wangare Madai's movement. We were part of William uh, Mutunga at the university. We, we had motivation from ideology. So ideology helps one to, to really get thinking and you are disturbed always when you see people begging and okay, you can give you a coin for today, but yeah. tomorrow, so that disturbance makes you think, why, why is this person the way they, and can we continue with this relationship where I have to throw coins? Mm. What can I do to change this circumstance? So for, for those reasons, then those who step forward say they, they are willing to take a risk and sacrifice so that the situation becomes better. Becomes better. And why is it there are so few of those that are in those kind of a situation that has been painted by Umbok that we see very few standing out to be counted, taking that brave uh, step? Well, <coughs> throughout the course of history, yeah. they've, they've always been so few. And... I do not expect that there will come a time that will change mm -hmm. the situation. It's right. only when the cause gathers momentum and brings in everybody, I mean, brings in more uh, now, well, in current language, stakeholders, yes. uh, that you seem to find m multitudes. But otherwise, the engine of any cause, the engine of a struggle, uh, the numbers are just very few. Mm. In that, it is that inspiration is not really going to be uh, widespread. Uh, that witnessing that he is saying is not going to be very widely shared. Uh, you need just a handful uh, of uh, symbols to be able to galvanize mm. and energize around yourselves. Right. And I, I, th I think it's also, for me, it's even strategic. To not to have that. all the masses in, and, in the uh, and you'll continue to explain that point because the handful, some of them are retiring and giving up on the course and we'll talk more about that but let's first speak to Ezekiel who's calling us from Kitale. Ezekiel, good morning. How are you? Good morning, madam. I'm great. Thank you for calling. You have a question or a comment? Yeah, uh, I have a comment. about you want to Mzuri sana, Ezekiel. Yeah, uh, thanks to the activism that you have been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I have some uh, reservation in as far as the approach is concerned. The act of activism itself is so good, but the approach that you have been using mm -hmm. is not good. It is not involving all of us as much as we would have wanted to participate. So, I want to ask you, what, what is it that you are doing so that all of us in Kenya can understand what you are really agitating for so that we can support or oppose it? All right. Ezekiel, yeah. thank you so much for calling us from Kitale. And keep your calls coming. You can share your comment or if questions that you have. And, um, of course, we will be sure to discuss your comments or have your questions fielded to our guests this morning. You were talking about that the importance of having just a few, that handful. Um, but then tying in with his question, you have a handful, but what is the issue with those handful that is not getting them to inspire uh, and get everybody to you know, come around, work with, agree, see the point. So that, uh, so much that uh, when you hear the likes of Boniface Mwangi talking about it's a frustration, uh, that you feel like, why do I care so much for people who don't care? Um, why do I, why am I putting my life on the line to be threatened and to be at risk when everybody else really is just actually now pointing fingers at me? Let, let, let me talk about uh, two things. One is called apathy. Uh, if you looked at how the 50-year celebrations mm -hmm. were, e even, even at, at the worst of, of, of the Moise dictatorship, right. you would organize a better <laughs> celebration. Function, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, there's apathy. Apathy that has to do with, with how 
for example, people come out and vote in a big way, right? Uh, which is also a mass action. Uh, 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 the voting day is in itself mm -hmm. a mass action. People coming out in masses to do one activity aimed at bringing change. Mm -hmm. Then what happens? They get nothing. Uh, secondly, the, the euphoria that uh, um, accompanies that voting uh, promises, promises, promises then you get nothing. So it, it has been a series of that kind of a situation that brings in apathy. People say, okay, in fact, we will have worse situation in 2017 because right. people not come out to vote. So the masses get wary. They get wary, they get mm -hmm. disappointed, they, and then there's the, the other businesses of, uh, people cannot even afford to come to town. It's that bad. Uh, when we organize uh, barriers and things like that. Mm. Somebody simply say, yes, I would like to be part of you guys, but I can't afford transport to come to town. L let's also pick this call from Malaba. Matsanga is calling us. Uh, Matsanga, good morning. Good morning, Sophie. <laughs> How are you? Thank you for calling. Share with us your question or comment. Yes, I have a, a comment for, 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 for you and uh, especially Kimani, my, my, my colleague who okay. has struggled for, for freedom in Africa also. Mm -hmm. There are two things. We have positive activism and the negative activism. What we see mostly in most of African countries, not on the Kenya, yeah. some of the countries in, 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 in Africa are worse than Kenya. Actually, when Kimani talks of Kenya being worse, I'm most scared because he was in Uganda, he saw what happened in Uganda. But the point is this. The founders of democracy who fought for us to get this freedom were not inspired by money. Mm. The biggest point today is most of the activism is inspired by money. Mm -hmm. How do we, Kimani, and the rest of us, control these manufacturers where foreign powers fund in people to come and go on our streets and overthrow uh, legitimate uh, elected government? So this is my worry, but otherwise activism is a very good one for everybody. Right. And I must you before I leave, Kenya does not have a middle society, a middle class, which can call, come to the streets of Nairobi. In fact, if you start a demonstration from the state house up to the city, you will find yourself remaining with five people. So we still have a lot to do in terms of, you know, getting proper positive activism. Yeah. And I engage, let's engage positively other than having negative pictures throwing around the whole world. Thank All you. right. All right, Matsanga, thank you very much for being part of our discussion this morning. Um, and, and you were talking about and it's brought in the, the, the issue of what inspires, um, you know, people. Now we have more people motivated by money. And, you know, some people in criticizing what Boniface was doing said, in leaving activism now, for it paints a picture that when getting into it, he really had not thought it through. It wasn't something that was embedded deep, because then why would you get to a point and decide you want to step out? Just a small one. Boniface is my friend, and yeah. uh, is a young fellow that uh, we hope we are mentoring, we mentored. Uh, and I've told him, and I do believe it, uh, yesterday when he was on the show, yeah. I tweeted and told him he's, he's not quitting. He's just, he's, uh, activism has faces, and he'll take on a new face. Mm. Rest assured, one of us is there to stay. He might uh, be retiring from his kind of uh, activism right. uh, and regain a new activism. And we have gone through those phases ourselves. Uh, we've been at it for so long. We can't say what we used to, how we used to uh, take it. Uh, you know, in the 80s, it's the same way we are doing it today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we are still there. Uh, uh, coming back to first, Ezekiel had a very valid point. Sure. Uh, I think from Kitale, mm. he would expect us to connect with him in Kitale. Uh, well, mm -hmm. yes, there is a disconnect. We can accept that, and there are several factors that contribute to disconnect, the apathy that my colleague, my comrade here is pointing out, mm -hmm. the desperation in society is really so high. Uh, poverty, those are factors. Now, 
the activists, and I find myself agreeing with Matsanga for <laughs> 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 there's activism. We cannot have sustained activism that is about money. True. Well, as money is a factor, we need resources for all this, but it can't be about money. And our society has been so configured currently mm -hmm. uh, around material gain. Mm -hmm. So that, even out there, so many people will not expect that we rally them right. around a cause and at the end of the day, they don't go home and take something. And we might understand, because where they're coming from, uh, the, amongst them is just those very few, the handful that we're talking about, that might go home with a, a very happily uh, strolling back, walking back home, yeah. very tired and hungry, and sleep soundly and say, well, I lived for the cause for the day. Mm -hmm. However much the family itself uh, will be destituted by, his, uh, by the activism. Yeah. That itself is a, is a factor. Now, the, the trying to organize and you, the people that you would expect, the activism that is not money-based, to percolate down to the, you know, the grassroots, uh, to go to Kitale, to get to Vanga, to get to uh, Moyale and uh, whatever, and Busia. It's that, that kind of organization needs, has of necessity changed. And therefore we organize through different tools now. Mm. And we go back even to the, our old cell structures. Now, we don't really need to have tiny cells anymore because we are above ground. We used to be underground, but yeah. we are now above ground. above ground. And therefore, what we do, you know, we, you know um, as trying to hog our space, the space mm. that we, we, we fought for, right. is to ensure that we organize uh, uh, small groupings that will go out there and keep organizing. The, 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 you, you might get a concept of the bunge wa na, of wa na, uh, bunge za wanainchi, right. about which is based like um, uh, I'm giving the example of bunge, which is mm -hmm. based at Jivanji Gardens as an open platform. But then you find so many bunges around the country. So I would uh, want to believe that as much as the, we might not be really felt, you know, this is uh, something that is being rekindled now, and I think uh, we are feeling it around the country now. Uh, you, we've seen even, uh, you know, around the devolution, uh, we've seen quite a lot of activism about local issues. Right. Uh, people in Kiambu coming out and uh, talking about, you know, uh, acting around uh, the butcheries. Mm. Well, that is in itself uh, very welcome activism. Okay. You know? And let me bring in Umbok in the issue of when we watched and saw the Arab, uh, the uprising and the Arab Spring, that and the kind of, some would have different arguments that success or not. But the fact that it happened, in your opinion, what is it about that kind of bringing the masses together uh, to get that one voice and everybody in it? I, I have been to uh, Egypt twice uh, after, after the uprising. Yeah. And um, I, I was part of it uh, you, through social media uh, because they had even controlled uh, travel, like foreigners who not going to. Uh, it started in Tunisia and, uh, and the frustration of not being able to be who you want to be mm -hmm. because the system uh, controls everything. In the case of... Uh, of uh, of Tunisia, uh, the Trebesi family, the family of the wife of, of uh, the president, mm -hmm. had a hand in every other big and small business, and not less than 50%. And that what triggered was simply, you know, Kanjo coming and taking your wares from the street and you are left with, with nothing. So that, that disparity are growing and growing, radicalizes uh, people. The difference here is uh, there is a systematic propaganda uh, that makes you think if people are uh, expressing themselves, then they are against this government. Mm. And you tie that to something foreign, say, oh, it's the Americans or British or some foreign forces 
some people in the country will say, okay, are these the same people who took us to ICC? But there's never a government that will be happy when there are people speaking against them. I'll let you continue on that point. Right. Uh, Nairobi, uh, Edward is calling us from Nairobi. Good morning, Edward. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for calling us. Uh, share with us your question or comment. Uh, my question goes to my friend, Omok. Omok, this is war. And uh, my question, Omok and Alamin, is how do we move to the next level? Mm -hmm. I remember the days when Omok was being beaten in the street with a Kina Njoya. Now you have uh, Boniface. Njoya is still there with his clock. And we are talking about the Arab Spring, which started in Tunisia. But yesterday, yes, actually, our government, look at Orengo, uh, Shikuku, uh, Wangari Madai, and uh, Boniface the other day was saying, I have given up. And I agree with Alamin, he has not given up, he's just taking another home. Like Ombok has taken a different angle. But how do we move to the next level? Mm. Because at the end of the day, these activists are families. You have bills to pay. You need food on the tables. But the gap between the rich and the poor keeps on rising. Right. How do we make a Tunisia or an Egypt out of our situation? How do we move to the next level? How do we make government listen? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Edward, for your question. And even as he's, you know, mentioned some names, somebody here on Twitter, Kamau Kibugi, says, Om Tata, Om Tata, and Om Tata. Yeah, one of the only true activists left. Uh, he's not in for the money. And you were trying to, you, you, were, you were talking about... Um, the issue of government that here it's a propaganda uh, where if you speak against the government then you you know saying something the government is not happy with then it becomes an issue but at the end of the day for any of these things to work out for the voices of the minority to be heard or majority who do not want to be in the minority that's standing up to be counted the government will never be happy with it even we had the media being told they were being what um, unpatriotic mm -hmm. over Westgate coverage. The president did say that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of some of the things that were actually being said, which were happening. Right. So then the conversation was, where is the line between reporting and exalting terrorism, but actually mm -hmm. saying what they are doing? And the question was to you. <laughs> the next level. Uh, well, this next level, I think <laughs> somebody said you cannot fool all the people all the time. Okay. Um, what, what this is doing is, w w without any mobilization happening, already the government, by the way it is handling things, is radicalizing the population. What is left is reconnecting Kenyans uh, and forgetting ethnicity the way they did in the 80s and realizing that our common enemy is a bad government, not because that government is from this community or from that community. Mm. So that hesitation as of now is about soul searching. Soul searching that people who are, who are still hopeful that le let's give this government time, maybe it is time that it, it needs. Mm. But if they don't do anything, which is actually the case, the growing inflation, uh, high prices of goods coming up, and uh, people not being able to sustain that anymore. It will not be an event in Nairobi. It sure. will be in the counties, and it will not be controllable. Yeah, it will be around the country. You, you said something about another of the biggest tool for politicians, that divide and rule, mm. but, you know, the ethnicity, negative ethnicity, that really is one of those things that plague the country. We have Honorable Nakitare calling from Kitale. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Katie. Thank you for calling. Uh, share with us your question or comment. Well, I, I have questions and comments. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, dear, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now, in fact, what we're doing is uh, amplifying uh, what has been lacking in the country is the voice of reason. The voice of reason uh, to the effect that. Uh, there is very little understanding between the government and the, the citizen of the country. Mm -hmm. Has the country had positive uh, things from the government, people would not be idolized in the street and even in the homes. However, 
to go further, I would also like to make sure that we also understand there has been a lot of accusation about when somebody reasons loudly is dubbed as um, an agent of a foreign media. <laughs> and the media has been called names, of course. They are very great. To me, I would understand this way. Activism is not idolism, but it's lack of voice of reason. Okay. I would like you to tell me about out of the demos that you have made, right from the time of Rickford University, and I was a pilot in the airport, how many of these demonstrations have actually been answered by the government? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. We appreciate you calling in. And of course, your point about the voice of reason at such a time uh, as this, because ultimately, you, make, you have the protest, but as he's posed finally there, is there any reaction? Do you see things change after we see the diaper mentality all over the streets? The diaper mentality continues. Um, Captain Mwishmiwa Nakitare has a valid point, but I would I sense some dismissiveness in his final statement mm -hmm. that uh, probably the protests and demos have been of no real actual, uh, you know, uh, fruition. Mm. But I'll tell him, I'll take him back, you know, to the days of his master's voice, you know, that's more his term for the media of the day, uh, the, the, the pro-democracy forces of the day. We were labeled and being told that we are singing our master's voice, meaning that singing the voice of the of the foreigner, right? Which is the same language that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, that, that's the same narrative that we are facing even today. We organized; they were, you know, very virulent, virulent uh, street battles uh, all over, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lost, uh, losses of life and limb. And uh, how much did that propel us forward? I think the answer is we are here because of that kind of, you know, the protests of the okay. past. Okay. Now, if we talk about the current protests, uh, as much as one might want to say, oh, the pigs and uh, the, 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 diapers. the diapers and whatever, you have no uh, impact. We are yet to evaluate that, and I believe we'll be evaluating it in some shorter or middle, uh, middle term, mm. uh, you know, looking back. But it is there. It think it's going somewhere within the psyche, the Kenyan psyche, mm. against you know, a, a mindset that's quite uh, stayed and entrenched, but, yeah. and deeply entrenched. But it is, it is going somewhere. It is a question now of the activism that is uh, that goes around uh, to also take a new form or take various other forms to enable to uh, harness all this. And it's not only we, we, our activism is not. Uh, contained only within the protest uh, movement. It's not just about demos. It's not. It's an engagement, and a lot of this engagement is that's happening is shaping quite a lot of uh, you know what goes on. Uh, I'll be it that it's going against a very very formidable uh, mentality, a very formidable position. Yeah. Uh, which opposition does not only is not just about government. It's actually uh, a, it's a, a class sort of uh, thing, you know, the political class itself is, a, is uh, so resistant mm. to any other voices and it's out to, stim uh, to stifle the voice of dissent and organizing around ethnicity, that neg negative ethnicity is not, uh, th that's not a, a government thing, it's, right. a, it's cut across the board right. and we are working against that. All that right. That's what we are rent against. As we bring this to a close, our time is up on Bok. Kenya is facing numerous challenges. It's a beautiful country. We have a lot working for us as a nation. But at the same time, there's so we could go farther. We could be at a different place. Why not for the things that cripple us, um, that as a country keep dragging and pulling us behind? Uh, the activism comes center stage as we commemorate 57 years of Dedan Kimathi to, to remind 
uh, Kenyans to remind everybody watching that there is a role that can be played. What would be your message to those watching us this morning? And because I'm a huge and big believer in that everybody has a role to play. It cannot be a Lamina alone. It cannot be, uh, you know, Angari Madai alone. It's everybody could do something. What is it in this modern day Kenya with the challenges that Kenya faces now that must be done to ensure that we grow and get to where we need to be uh, as a democracy? Let me jump in very fast before Mbok comes in. As um, you wind up, yes. Um, um, yeah. We're talking of even we're hearing of Nyumba Kumis and whatever. Right. Let me talk about civil society briefly. That when we organize ourselves, even within the estate, and discuss, come to discuss and to ta ta tackle the estate terms, we are civil society. Mm -hmm. When you talk about, you know, in the village out there, and we're talking about the cattle dip, we are civil society. So, civil society has to be reignited up to, you know, the very, very minute level and take up issues. It's not about uh, Mbok or yourself going down there. It's those local people, those uh, with the problem, to take up a cause and let's have those causes now building up to our pinnacles wherever we are. All right, finally. Yeah, thank you. I, I think one thing is to reignite patriotism. Mm. I, I was here, was it two years ago, or <laughs> time is running fast, when I was coordinating Kenya Daima, mm -hmm. And we were here talking about climbing Mount Kenya, uh, 42 tribes, right. and so on. Um, Kenya Daima was a campaign to, to, to foster uh, patriotism around election, to have peaceful elections, and then to have prosperity thereafter. I still campaign for Kenya Daima, that we as citizens, we are not mwananchi, wewe ni mwenyenchi. Mm. And as Mwenenchi, you have to be a responsible Kenyan who does not wait for uh, a politician to either get hand out or to tell you what to do next. So the, the, the quest to organize and question the system right. is the right and responsibility of every Kenyan. And, and the reason we are commemorating this Kemati Day is for, to remind Kenyans that they have a responsibility to, to safeguard what uh, Kemati died for what Kemati died for, indeed. Yeah. And uh, thank you uh, thank very you. much, gentlemen, so. for being part of our conversation. It is one of those, very important. We could go on and on and on. Right. And want to thank our viewers as well who called in, who texted and tweeted. I'll be sampling some of your views later on. But Otieno Mboka, Lamin Kimathi of the Human Rights Solidarity Committee with us this morning. It's all about activism, the Kenya we want. And it's upon each and every one of us to play our role. Asante Nisana. 8.04 a.m. We